Okay, going under our last little bit that we skipped over getting out of order. And this is the main Google Dumb story. And you know what? I really can't decide what the hell I think of this. It, 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 well, here's the thing, you know, I, I, there's so many ways to come at this. It's Safari, and Apple's like, oh, you know, we're a Mac, we're secure, we have everything protected, and of course, <laughs> uh, but this is this really is a case of, this was a WebKit exploit on which um, uh, Safari is based. Ironically enough, this has been patched in WebKit by two Google engineers who released how to patch this oh, months I ago. Google. <laughs> like Google Chrome is also WebKit. I know that. A lot of things are WebKit. I, I, I know that, but this is what I'm laughing at. I'm like, it, it's basically Apple wasn't running the latest version of WebKit, which has this patched, because Google did, what the Google engineers were nice enough to put your past up, upstream. Uh, and at the end of the day, this was user, this really was a social hack. And it was, um, if you was a user clicked on something, what would traditionally be a third party cookie became sticky and wasn't interpreted anymore by Safari as a third party cookie. And so allowed Google to track you around the interweb because you had participated in something and let this form be signed and yada yada. And so, you know... Oh, that sounds fun. Well, well, if you understand cookie permissions, it's not as bad as it sounds. Basically, you have to make a, an exception like this, and I can see why Safari had this exception, because say I log into a website and I leave it, or as part of doing that website, like I go to a, another site and then back to this site because they're sending payment processing through an outside company, and a number of websites do this, or so on and so forth. The cookie has to carry, even though it's a third-party cookie, to complete the transaction for chain of custody. If they didn't allow these types of sticky cookies, uh, large parts of the internet wouldn't work. Um, and that really is all this was. It was just a, a sticky cookie that managed to wind up in giving Google a, a wealth of information they usually wouldn't have had access to. Uh, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I can honestly see Google not necessarily doing this nefariously, and it just kind of no, working. No, don't be evil stuff. Well, no, and it just kind of working out in their favor. On the other hand, I can see them going, "Well, here's the way we get around the fact that we can't track shit." So I, 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 I don't know. You know, Google's official statement it was it was just a happy accident. Apple says they're going to be updating the version of WebKit Safari is based on to include the version of Safari that has this patched. So, but in the meantime, uh, Safari was not as private as people thought it was. <laughs> it, it, wh wh where do y'all sit on this? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Who the hell uses Safari anyway? You like, oh, Mac uses it. She's Firefox and Chrome now. I, I've used Firefox since it started. I don't Safari. Safari doesn't exist for me. For me, it, it goes Firefox, Opera, and then IE for development. That's it. Safari doesn't exist on our radar. You know what? And I only acknowledge IE so long as it has more than 15% market share. The moment it falls below that, I am not going to care about IE. <laughs> no. I have a lot of clients that are still ActiveX based. So... Yeah, if you're doing ActiveX development, yeah, that makes a difference. But for the type of stuff I do, you know, most of my, I'm using PHP, JavaScript, and HTML. Uh, so, it, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, see, I'm sorry. Those people that like open standards and HTML5 can't do shit that ActiveX does in terms of access to the machine and stuff that my clients need. Oh, I, I, you know, I, I told you, dude, when we get off camera, you and I need to have a discussion about the boxing match I've been having. It's like, it's like, <laughs> what am I doing on Thursday? It well, is yeah. if it wasn't for HTML5, uh, Hulu, would, uh, Hulu and uh, uh, Netflix wouldn't work on uh, the Nintendo Wii, uh, the PS3. That's not entirely true. Well, originally it was all uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat. I mean, no. Well, how do you wrap around your arm 
HTML5. And yeah, but that it. has nothing to do with HTML5. That has to do with just alternatives to Flash. Here's the thing. What, 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 what and you know what? When I bid for... Well, video, wait, 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 video codec is, is still dominated by Flash. Well, no, see, that, that's the thing. The official part of it that's HTML5 is just the video tag. And this is one of the things, oh God, I, I am getting sick to death for the last six months. Every time I apply for a job, every time I sign, you know, HTML5 is the big frickin' buzzword. Every time I've been on a contract, every time I just, uh, I'm like, okay, I understand. But let me explain what HTML5 actually is. And then I explain, you know, what the difference is, and it's these tags, and why, okay, yes, you want to use the video tag, but you also want to have a fallback, because the following browsers do not know what the fuck to do with it. This is how this device handles it. This is how this device handles it. It's like, it's like you don't, it, it, and they're like, oh, oh, oh okay. Now, now, don't get me wrong, we're going to write a nice modern, modern thing, and do everything, and yes, and, and, your custom, and you can even say it's HTML5, because we're going to put the HTML5 header in it, but... Uh, understand, it's not. Uh, the, yeah, there are, there are many benefits to HTML5 that I like. Oh yeah, and no, I, 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 I don't. HTML5 but, is nothing more than old HTML4 objects that we're working with that are now unified. Exactly, and, 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 and there's many benefits to that. A good deal yeah, number of them. But I'm saying that see, I, I don't like the zero sum game. There is a, there is a place for open standards, and there's a place for plug-in richness. Plugins allow us access to things that we really need rather than using cloud services to do it. Mm. And I have lots of clients that need that richness. And HTML5 will never, ever, ever be able to obtain that. It's a sandboxed universe. Well, now, here, here's the thing. Eventually, when this comes to a head, one of two things is going to happen. The industry is either going to back off HTML5 or we're going to set permissions for browser intercepting oh, no. back <laughs> like it was, in, in which case, let the hacking begin. <laughs> now, now, plugins are here to stay, uh, no matter what people want to. Now, make for as far as what Flash provided it is like an interactive, beautiful graphics spinning around and stuff like that. Well, and, 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 and you know what? There's a lot of people who would like to see everything go pure HTML, pure CSS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, however, here's the thing. Both of those languages, why that may happen at some point, both of those languages are too damn primitive. I mean, I, 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 here's a challenge to anybody who thinks we can go pure HTML, pure CSS. Write me an on-click event purely using HTML and CSS. At a minimum, you have to add in some JavaScript, and you're going to have limited functionality depending on what you're doing and what framework and how you can intercept and do with that. It, you're going to create some usability issues in intercepting things like the well, back I don't button. Think they're arguing not to use JavaScript, but what I'm getting, what, what, what I'm Oh, no, no, no. Is, there's a lot of people are... Yeah, there's a lot of people arguing not to use JavaScript right now because current mobile devices have a problem with it. They have to. Java. What do they want to use? They want to use pure HTML and CSS. They're, they're, I'm not aware of any client protocols though in HTML5 for events and like advent listening and all this other stuff. There, there, there aren't. You, you, to do things like that, you have to use JavaScript or Ajax or you have other to have things. A client in, you have to have a client. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. That, that was the whole point why we even started with CGI before. We had HTML as markup, <laughs> and we used CGI, and then we finally got ActiveX and Java applets. And I mean, pl all this plugin free world that they can go bite themselves. Plugins have a place, and so do open standards. Here's where I honestly think we're going to go a bit in terms of that, and then we'll get back on topic unless any of y'all want to add to it. I honestly think we're going to wind up going the route that Chrome has gone, where we're going to have plugins, but like we have a certain set of libraries, there's going to be a certain set of plugins that are just kind of the de facto functionality frameworks, and they're going to be built into the browsers. Uh, so you don't need a plugin for every single site. Uh, and and then it's going to be the this is the Mozilla version of the plugin. This is right. the this is the yeah. WebKit version of the plugin, and this if of you, course. If we really want to do rich things on the internet. Yeah, I you, mean rich as in accessing important things that have to do with the machines that you're that, that it's running on, like getting user information and database input and all these other things. Not not the little small little cache 
database that you have in HTML5. Right. Uh, I, I, if you're going to do some real user powerhouse things, it, the browser needs access to things outside of what it's normally has. That is and, and, and I see the, the plugin, browsers but, building in a plugin layer where the browser acts as the, the sandbox gateway. I do see that. But, but, it, but, but all that is, that's not getting rid of plugins. That's building the plugins into the browser. I don't think HTML5 can, in, in time of code production, unless you're using a, a tool generally, like Adobe allows you to create things now with their tools that publish HTML5. But Flash had a very powerful underpinning to it. Before, and, and that was something that they had added years later. I used to argue against Flash in terms of just the aesthetics of it. But once they started integrating backend services to it, it became a, a much more powerful entity in the world. There, 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 there are still issues with Flash that it, it's not preferred unless you have to use Flash. But that's a different topic. I can't tell you how many secure websites that do on a government that will never go HTML5. <laughs> they prefer a, a compiled package, Flash-based entity, because nothing can be done to it. It can't be exploited. There's no markup to look at or anything. You know and what? You know what? Why do a lot of Mac people just hate Flash? Is it because of something that Steve Jobs says? Is it because of... Yeah, they, they do. I, I, they call me, I don't like Flash. But it's because it's difficult to optimize. If for the, all the reasons government, uh, Bits saying government likes Flash is all the reasons the industry would like to get away from it because it, it's it, unless done exactly right, it can be limiting and it doesn't interact. Well, I don't. I don't agree that it's limiting. I mean, the, the thing of it is, we have a lot of bad SWFs out there that cause hangups in browsers. But I have yet to have my Mac crash from Flash. Uh, uh, and, bit. Go to a Flash site that, in your opinion, is well, good. I'm not visiting garbage. No. Okay. No. 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 Here's 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 something I want you to do. Go to a site that, in your opinion, is a good, not garbage flash site. Go to one of the links, mm -hmm. right click, and open that in a new window. And we're I don't want to do that. That's not my point. That, that is not limit. Look, if I'm a programmer and I want to have my whole encapsulation secure, I don't find it limiting. I, I as a programmer, don't find it limiting. Why should the end user be concerned about right clicking and finding out content? No, no, not finding out content, just using tab browsing. I want to open this link in a new tab or new window. Then hit can then hit can uh, uh, what you call it your like command T for the for the for the uh, the link or whatever it is. It doesn't work properly. Let me, let me try. I've never tried that. But, but, it, uh, it, it's a usability behavior that is can't properly be emulated with the way the flash content works. Why there? Why if written properly, it can, it can be indexed now by the search engines. I mean, Google does index flash content. It. it it's more difficult. It's basically it depends on the type of user you're shooting the page at and what your goals are. Okay. It, 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 you can create usability rubs. You can create optimization rubs. You can create other things like that. It looks pretty, but it, it, at the end of the day, if your users are trying to do things and decide, decide it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's one of those things. Yeah, Flash won't let you. I'm trying to think about it. Flash won't let you because the link itself is actually part of the of the Flash object itself. Exactly. And, and, and like I said, all the things that make, like you said, the people who are proponents of Flash like it is is the is the, is one of those things. It's great in this circumstance. It's a downside in this circumstance. It, it, well, you know, why would you want to open? Then you would have to re, you would have to regenerate the whole Flash SWF. Or to get into a new tab. Like, and, 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 but but if you're on like uh, like here, I'm in the Google Doc right now. Any one of these stories, I don't have to close the Google Doc. I don't have to leave the Google Doc. I just right click. All uh, right. So the argument is that there's a place for Flash and there's, a, there's not a place for exactly. Flash. Exactly. Here, here, the problem comes when you're trying to do like the whole site in Flash, for and, and you know the sites I'm talking about. Yeah, but I mean a lot of people do it like. These uh, businesses that provide like tax returns or something like that—they yep. love encapsulating and using Flash because it, they can control total security and non-exploits and all sorts of that. Yeah, it, so. yeah. It basically, it has its place, but it's not a full replacement like some people. It, it's just it, yeah. Okay, um, getting back to the Google domain on topic real quick. It's, sorry to go off on that tangent, everybody. Uh, yeah, we, we ended up talking about uh, Apple. We talked about Microsoft. We supposed to be 
talk about Microsoft and I'm talking about Apple. We're supposed to be talking about Google. We're going to talk about stuff in general. We're going to talk about web standards. It's like, it's like the, the, the running gag of tonight is we're always talking about a different topic than the one we're supposed to be talking about. It's like it's a test to those things. I know. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. Um, anyways, the question I was going to ask on the topic at hand, the Google hacking safari, what the hell do y'all think? Because like I said, I can't make up my mind on whether Google's done something evil or rather this is just a combination of weird things creating a sensationalizable story. <laughs> I think Google found a loophole where they're not being evil, they're being great. <laughs> oh, I need a gray fez. <laughs> or, or a fedora. Yeah, I need a gray fedora. Thank you, Tony. Tell my wife I said hi. <laughs> uh, who, who, uh, this, this, or bit? Uh, I don't know, man. Go, look, Google... It's not, it, it's not ethical on Google's part, and it's not ethical on Apple's part. I mean, in terms of the system is supposed to be exploit-free, there was obviously an exploit that was utilized, so uh, what, what, what's, what's right or wrong here? I don't know. Um, I mean, it's WebKit, so um, and both companies use them. That's what's so funny about this. Well, WebKit is open source, so I mean... Of course, Google's going to be able to see it, everything. I, I mean, what is what is there to say? It's like, okay, uh, why isn't it? I, I, my first question is, why isn't it happening to IE or Firefox or Opera? Uh, that, that was my that would be my first. Yeah, like actually, who put in that has that put in that exploit? It's, you know what I'm saying? When I first read that, I was like, oh, okay. Then why isn't this happening on any other browser? Why is it just so far? Uh, basically, see, Apple, it, Apple users are very Apple centric and make it about themselves. And when they missed a greater point, why is it not exploded on these browsers? Well, basically, it had to do with the way in which Safari was handling sticky cookies slightly differently than the other WebKit based browsers. So, in the Apple lens of things, it's always Google fault, Google's fault because Google is the new Microsoft for Apple. Um, you know, uh, hey. Keep your doors locked, you know? <laughs> Don't use Safari. Don't be a jackass. Well, <laughs> and, and, and the really funny thing about this is uh, it's a little bit of uh, the default behavior of... What was the bad outcome? What did Google get? What is Google getting? It, it, it was basically they were getting they were getting usage data, usage history data by this sticky cookie being tracked that would allow them to better optimize. You know how they started tracking your browser history to optimize um, to optimize their advertising. So like if you go to like if you were go to Babies R Us bit, they'd start showing you nothing but baby ads. You know, and uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I guess that's how you look at it. If you're an Apple Lens guy, it's all about Google and, and, and how evil they are, Bert, and you completely miss the idea of, of why isn't any, any other browser exploited. Well, and, and, and here's the and really... Th and because, because Apple is good, and Safari, so therefore, must be good. Well, you want to know the funny thing about this? For all the other browsers, Google created an opt-out thing which you could install which basically would make sure Google didn't track you around. They had on their site, they've now removed it, which said, we don't have a working version of this opt-out for Safari because Safari, by default, is disabling these cookies. So basically, we don't have a way to, to stick the cookie in. Basically, on every other browser besides Safari, you could go to a Google site, say, I want to opt out. Google would put a sticky cookie in you, which would disable tracking. So Google had created that ability. Default behavior from Safari was to block third-party cookies. So when Google tried to deposit the sticky cookie, Safari would unstick it. So... Yeah, yeah, you know what? Let me put this in perspective. You know, beyond all the technicalities, <laughs> Apple likes to have a wall guard. Uh-huh. 
And, and this is the case, bad. like and what you're saying. To, exactly. And Safari likes to handle their shit differently. Google had to respond and, and doing their uh, advertising differently. And guess what? I, this all has to stem with why iAds was created to begin with. They wanted to do away with Flash. They wanted to do away with little, the little Google Dumbs, El Cheapo uh, advertising. It, yeah. And, 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 and my, 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 has an iAd fallen from grace. The million dollar entry has now fallen to one hundred thousand dollars to enter into iAds. Well, and, and what, what's I, really? I, I thought the iPhone was so ubiquitous, <laughs> such kingdom come that everybody must have one. It should do the opposite direction. It should be selling for two million dollars for iAd entry. Well, but the, oh, here, here's the thing: at the end of the day, Google uh, Google's. Hold on, guys. There's another reason why iAd was made. Uh, if you also know, remember, Mr. Bit, uh, Google bought the two, uh, the two uh, ad companies that were uh, putting ad on uh, that were putting ads on on iPhone apps. And basically, Google was collecting money off of all those uh, ads that were being clicked on the iPhones and iPod touches. Sure. The yeah, Apple wanted that money. And this has to do with Apple wanting to be in the entire world. They want to have their own advertising and no one else, and that's why they do things differently because it's the highway or the highway, essentially. Well, and, and, and this really is a case where the Apple doing things differently. I mean, the reality is, on every other browser, like you're saying, why wasn't this happening on other WebKit browsers? Well, on other WebKit browsers, the default behavior of the browser would allow this would allow the opt out to stick. So even though they could have been doing that on that, all you had to do was go opt out. Uh, and, and basically, Apple wanting to be different uh, broke the ability to opt out. <laughs> I mean, isn't, it, yeah. isn't that ironic, though, that iAds, how they start off with a million and have it down to 100K? Well, no, you know what? It's got to come down. Hey, I thought the iPhone was the next Messiah. Bit, but if, at that, the, if that's the case, why aren't they selling their spots for two million? Bit, I will tell you exactly why. And honestly, I think it's going to have to come down a lot more. The great advantage for all the things that are wrong with it to the way Google does advertising, I'm a small business and I want to give you a hundred bucks, Google. Okay, give us a hundred bucks. I want to give you five bucks. Give us your five bucks. I want to give you a penny. Well, if you can find a word that's for sale for a penny, you can give us a penny. It's like, it, it basically, they don't turn anybody's money away. They let everybody from the little mom and pop down the store that has an advertising budget of $50 to the multi-million dollar company who wants to spend hundred k a week participate. Well, how about this? iOS is not as powerful as we're meant to in the market. <laughs> in, 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 that, in that, we all know that Android has the market share. And we also know that iOS, well, we have to explain why is there 97 billion in the bank. Well, one, we, ought, we know that there's a $100 automatic subsidy for each iPhone sold. So that equals hundreds of millions right there, right? Um, and because I'm quite frankly, I think advertisements speak for themselves. We, like TV runs and ads, lots of things run on ads. And if they can't sell a million dollar entry into ad and iOS at the same time being such this number one all powerful second coming of an operating system and, and if you're not on iOS you're just a dumbass because you know Android users are just idiots according to Apple Purist. I don't understand the logic here. I the only thing that's telling me is that I we are misled into believing how powerful iOS is really pragmatically. Profits are a different thing. It just means people are just willing to give up more of their money even if it's garbage and it stinks. I mean, it, 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 I think it's very clear that a sign of, of possibly things to come, if they can't sell advertisements on something we're living Well, I mean, the, let, let me ask you as somebody who, I mean, if, if somebody who runs a business bit, since you brought it up, okay, let's say you had $10 million in the bank. Let's play devil's advocate. Let's say you got $10 million cash. Would you be willing to part with a million dollars on that for I for I ads? If it was big enough, absolutely. If I if my impressions could hit the fleets that 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 I'm led to believe exist out there, you betcha. Think about well, it. Fish in a, in a big pond without that many big fish there, right? The truth is, Apple couldn't compete against Google because they're because I mean. 
when in the uh, iPod, I mean, when the iPhone and the iPod Touch first came out, they had something on there called Maps, which goes into, guess what, Google Maps. And then they had to add a YouTube app. And Google basically says, we have the market shares, fuck you, Apple. They do. Android and, definitely has market share, absolutely. And, and not only that, Google makes money off the all iOS, as well as Android. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft yeah. makes money off of Android as well. G- Google makes money off of Windows. Name me a platform Google doesn't make money off of. <laughs> well, here's my, here's my conundrum. Why does the 99% always talk about how Apple is this wonderful company that is actually taking more, more out of their pocket. Than <laughs> Amazon, Amazon is actually being more, I guess you could say, ethical in terms of what the 99% argument is, and that they're trying to give you something that is kick-ass for the least amount of profit possible to stay alive. But here's Apple that gets... $100 subsidies for free. If you want to ask me why the 99 percenters versus 1 percenters support Apple, I cannot explain it to you. And, I mean, I'm just, I'm just baffled, but I think that advertising says a lot about the direction of where things are, are, are going. And was it not, remember this, this I guess, we used to hear the Apple peers argue that Android would never overtake iPhone market share. Once oh, that occurred, would. yeah, of course, and we argued it would. Once that happened, Apple peers stopped, stopped arguing market share. No, 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 it. no. They still argue market share in tablets. Well, yeah. you, you, you may own phones, but tablets are where it is, and we rule there. Uh, uh, it's true, but most, most will go and say, oh, well, market share doesn't matter. Look at Apple's profits. Okay, well, yeah, I do look at Apple's profits, and I know they get, a, like, the, the free $100 subsidy. Once that profit goes away, uh... Via, via cell, cell carriers getting alternatives as they come up, and they're not willing to pay the big subsidy. What happens then? All right, you don't have profits, and then you don't have market share. I mean, that, and, and then you don't have people that want to advertise on your shit. So then what? I mean, it's clearly telling me that nobody want to, nobody wants to to pay. Their gold coin. Uh, has has anybody? Had, I, I haven't been keeping track of iads because it's just not really something to keep. Track. Track. No, no, no. I want to ask since you've been keeping track of it. Uh, <laughs> how many people? A bit. How many advertisers have taken Apple up on their offer of? Very few. Very few. That's why they're lowering it down. Very few. They had that Nissan Leaf bullshit commercial that Nissan. It was like a Super Bowl commercial. Nissan knew that it better be a shitload of people watching that keynote. It's like bang for a Super Bowl commercial. That's why Nissan did that little rigmarole. And then the other thing was Toy Story, which Steve Jobs is part of the board of, of Pixar. So right. We need, to, we need to go any further. But it, it's just it's just funny that nobody wants to pay their uh, their their homage to uh, the Messiah that is iOS. You know, it's it's uh, I find it baffling. That's all. I, I have a video on YouTube that said iAds would fail and it would not stick. And I was right. They did. They could not maintain the high cost of entry. And I don't think iOS is as big as everybody purports it to be. They have the profit now because they sold a shitload of iPhones at a higher markup one plus a free subsidy from the cell carriers for every damn unit sold. That's not going to last forever. And when that stops, though, all those profits will evaporate. Well, and, and more point. and more in advertising, and I don't know if this is how the I ads thing works, but advertisers are liking more and more. I only pay for one of two things: either somebody does something, or somebody, or I know unequivocally this was my target demographic. Uh, and I don't think that's how I. I- iOS is the, is the Messiah. Come on, you're not with it.